Good evening, folks. Welcome to Beavertown Church. Thank you so much for that good song. We give a warm welcome to Hope Sound Bible College and to all of you, a great looking crowd on a Wednesday night. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, I believe this is your last stop on the Spring Choir Tour. So that means a couple of things. They might be a little tired, but. Guys in the back, you don't have to save your voice anymore, okay? And all the other people on the bus will be happy if you don't have a, a voice on the 18-hour ride home. So here's the deal. We want you to just sing with everything that's in you. Don't worry about your voice. And all the vocal coaches are all worried about this. But we're not worried about it. Just give it your best. And uh, we'll support you. We'll say amen. We'll smile. Right, folks? All right, I think they're with us. Let's stand together for an opening word of prayer. We are remembering. I uh, just want to take a moment to pray for several individuals. Ashley Blackman in an accident from Hope Sound, praying for her tonight. Uh, several in our congregation recovering from surgery tonight. Charlie Leitzel, Rachel Plank, Steve Haynes, uh, Carol Zeckman, Gladys Bratz in the hospital. So let's remember these ones who've had surgeries this week already, and uh, let's pray that God would be with them. But let's ask God to work in this service and uh, work in our own hearts. Father in heaven, we are grateful to be in your presence. I pray that once again you would meet with us, anoint the choir as they would sing. I pray that you would minister to their hearts, minister through them and to them, minister to our hearts. And when it's all said and done, may you be given the glory and the honor and praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask these things. And all God's people said, amen. I'm going to turn it to Brother Paul Stetler at this time. Do you want them standing or to be seated? He wants you to stand, so let's do our best in the singing. Well, good evening. It is so good to be with you tonight. We've been looking forward to this service, and I want us to sing a song. You know, the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people, and it also says that where two or three are gathered, he is in the midst. There's a lot more than two or three here tonight, and I have a feeling that there are quite a few people here that have already met with Jesus today. And I just want us to blend our hearts, blend our voices, blend our minds together, and let's praise God and let's trust that He will inhabit our praise and He will come and visit us with His presence tonight. That's what we want more than anything in the world. Amen? 
Amen. If you need the words, it's number 44 in your Sing to the Lord, Great is Thy Faithfulness. As we sing, the choir is coming to the platform. Let's sing it together. Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness, O God my Father. singing his direction. Let's sing it together. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. And all I can testify, all already here tonight, <laughs> just like he's been on all the rest of our services. And I just want to tell you tonight, before we even sing the first song, that whatever you brought through those doors with you, he has the answer for. Right. And you don't have to leave this building the same way you came in. If you came in discouraged, if you came in depressed, if you came in backslidden, if you came in on the verge of giving up, the healer is here. That's 
<laughs> and he wants to touch you. And I can testify that his touch is the answer. His touch is what we need. Hallelujah. God is good. Let's worship him together. You may be seated. Lucas Ryder is coming to direct. Carla Case is accompanying on the piano. The chapel choir from Hope Sound Bible College. Worship with us.
Praise the Lord tonight. It's such a privilege to be here worshiping together with all of you as we praise our God who is so great and so worthy of all of our praise tonight. In putting together this service uh, over several months where it was going through a really troubling time and I'm thinking, Lord, how can I be picking music for this next school year when I don't even know if we're going to be having a next school year when I was choosing music last summer and I just felt impressed upon my heart to put together a service of music that reflected the reality of scripture where God says, I am be ye. God shows us who he he is as our loving Heavenly Father. He displays His greatness through creation. He shows us His love through the gift of His only Son. And yet He doesn't leave us there, but He makes the pathway where we can become His dear children, where we can begin to become like Jesus. He can make us into the image of His Son. And I praise Him for that promise of Scripture, that it's not just a, a, a wonder of looking at God and amazed at His majesty, but it's a personal relationship that He changes us from the inside out so that we can be who He created us to be. I praise Him tonight. This next song is just a, a medley of several praise songs, just rejoicing in how good our God is this evening.
Amen. I'm so thankful for the thought of those songs, that he is worthy of every praise, Amen. that we can never do enough to praise him for all that he's ever done for us. You know, I was debating on whether to testify here tonight as I realized that in a few weeks I graduate and I look back on the things that God has done for me. I just felt like I should just publicly give him the praise and give him the glory for all that he's done in my life and all that I've come through and all that I used to be a complete goober, still a partial goober now, but I am so thankful for all that he's done for me. He deserves all the honor, all the glory. For he is truly still sitting on his throne tonight. He is there, our Heavenly Father. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us tonight, and we go to him. And he is truly worthy of every praise tonight and every honor and every glory that we could ever give him. And that's what we seek to do tonight, is to worship him and magnify his name forever and ever. Every praise is to our God. tonight. It's nice to be back home in my home church. I'm so thankful for what God has done for me this past year and just how he's changed my life. And uh, some of you know that I was seeking sanctification a year ago and the Lord has sanctified me and completely changed my life. I used to think that surrendering everything to God would be scary or um, he would require too much of me that I wasn't able to give. But I, I have found um, that everything surrendered to God is the only thing that gives you joy and peace. And this next song talks about how the king and I are no longer strangers. And I'm so glad that's true in my life. I'm so thankful for what he's done for me.
so thankful how God has been working not only in my life, but in, I'm sure, every life of every person in the choir since day one of choir tour. But something that really stuck out to me was in the first youth service of IHC was the story of the prodigal son from the older brother's perspective. He did all the right things, he worked for his dad, and thought he deserved his inheritance, but he didn't have that relationship. And I know that can be an easy thing to do, to live outwardly doing the right things, saying the right things, but ignoring the relationship, which is so important. And in this next song, the first line is, O oh great God of highest heaven, occupy my lowly heart. And I am so thankful for that we are able to have that relationship, that, because it gives, it's what gives purpose to my life, and I'm just so thankful tonight. God tonight for everything he's doing for me, for working in my life and, and saving me, and I'm just so grateful for that. Um, this next song we're going to sing tonight is called I Go to the Rock, and it, the first line says, when the billows are raging all around my soul, when the, sto when the storms of confusion around me roll, we can go to the rock, and I'm so grateful for that tonight in my own life, that whenever we need him, we can go to the rock, and he's going to take care of us, and I'm so grateful for that promise tonight.
God is our rock and that we can go to him for a shelter any time, any moment, that he's there for us. But sometimes the storms overtake us in life and that shelter has to come to us. And our next song says that's when God steps in. When those storms overtake us, when those times get hard, God is more than willing to come to us instead of us running to him. And I am thankful for that tonight. I couldn't help but share a little bit of a personal story tonight uh, in connection with your church. Um, as Tanner mentioned, we're getting ready to sing the song, That's When God Steps In. And during the pandemic, this song, this thought, and, and the song came to my mind as something that would be a great encouragement uh, to us during these times. But I, I couldn't find the music. And if you're, if you're a musician and you have a song that you want to do, especially in a setting like this, and you can't find the music, that's a little bit frustrating. And I was looking for music and, and trying to find it, and I found one copy that I purchased online, and I thought, well, at least if I can get my hand on one copy, uh, maybe we can do something with that. And I was headed across uh, our campus there at, at Hope Sound. I'd gotten the notification that this one copy of the music was in my mailbox, and I was going to pick it up and was kind of weighing in the balance whether or not we should do this song this year. And as I was walking across campus, I received a phone call on my cell phone from my aunt uh, who lives in Illinois. And she doesn't call me often, so I picked up the phone and I answered. And uh, she said to me, Lucas, you're never going to believe it, but your uncle got saved. And I nearly dropped the phone. Uh, was so uh, blessed in my heart and I said how and where and when and what and, and I need all the details and she said because of the pandemic because of the pandemic she was sitting at home attending church at Beavertown God's Missionary Church on her computer screen and my uncle who was unsaved who'd been out of church over 40 years started to listen started to come and sit a little bit closer and eventually started watching those services with her and praise God, glory to God, my uncle is saved tonight and is on the road toward heaven. And I, I received that news on my cell phone and stepped in the mail room and opened up this song in my mailbox and I said, I don't care what it takes, we have to sing this song this year. We're gonna find a way to sing, that's when God steps in. Because when situations look hopeless, we had prayed for my uncle for my entire life. I did not remember a time in my life where we weren't praying for my uncle's salvation. And it's, with, it's those types of situations in our lives where we're tempted to give up, we're tempted to think that it's hopeless, to think that it's impossible, and that's right when God's waiting in the wings to step in in powerful ways and meet needs. I praise his name tonight for that message.
Well, I love that song, When God Steps In. And wasn't that a marvelous story? You wonder whether your church services are accomplishing anything when everything has to go different. Well, God just sent you a message to say you're on the right track. That's what he did. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, it's a joy to be here with you tonight. I've always enjoyed coming to your church, and it's a pleasure tonight. You know, some places you kind of feel like people are treating you like a calf looks at a new gate. Are you country enough to know what that's like? A calf looks at a new gate, they just kind of stare at that gate with those big bovine eyes of theirs, you know. And some people look at you, and he's like, did I put my shirt on backwards or what, you know? <laughs> but you're not doing that tonight. You're, you're, you're worshiping with us and helping us, and there's a reciprocal activity there that is very, very important. I'm here to talk to you about Christian education and its importance. I've come to the conclusion it's time somebody started stepping right up front and saying something about how important it is. Now, I understand that you're right here in proximity to Penn View. A lot of your children, your grandchildren go there, and that's wonderful. But we need a refresher course every once in a while on how vitally important it is. Let me start off this way. On November the 10th, 2020, there was a horrible, horrible multiple tractor trailer accident on the Brent Spence Bridge, which connects Cincinnati to Northern Kentucky. That's a double-decker bridge, has about five lanes on the bottom uh, coming north and on the top going south. I've been over to that bridge literally hundreds of times in my life. When it was first built, quite an architectural wonder. I didn't realize what, a, what a, an important link that bridge is for commerce all across the Northeast and the Southeast of the United States. Did you know that bridge is the second busiest bridge in the nation? The first is George Washington Bridge in New York City. The second is the Brent Spence Bridge. It was designed to carry about 75,000 cars a day when it was built. It currently carries about 185,000 cars a day. Listen to this, 400 billion dollars worth of goods and services travel back and forth across that bridge every single year. That boggles my mind. It's a very important link. It's an artery. Well, now this truck accident happened. 2.45 in the morning, an old Dominion tractor trailer jackknifed. Nobody knows why. It jackknifed on the northbound lane, the bottom deck of that bridge. And a tanker truck carrying potassium hydroxide hit it and spilled 400 gallons of diesel fuel all over the roadway. It caught fire. It burned and burned, temperature soared to 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Because the upper deck was there, the heat was contained. Yes, the sides were open, but now you've got concrete and steel and concrete and steel, and in between that is this inferno. And it burned until chunks of concrete were falling off and huge I-beam girders were losing their temper and starting to warp and give way. They shut the whole bridge down. I came up through there not long after that happened. They were starting the process of work. It cost $12 million to build that bridge initially. It was going to cost $12,500,000 to repair the damage to that bridge. I no more than got off of Interstate 71 and on to Interstate 75, 71 together until I ran into traffic. We're talking like 25 miles from the river and the bridge. And I thought, well, I'll get off at 275. I don't know. I didn't know about the accident. I got to 275 and the traffic just continued and I continued about a quarter of a way around the city. And it was just traffic, 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 traffic. When I got past where that traffic was veering back into the city of Cincinnati and started northward, it was on the other side. 
That loss of that link just devastated commerce all across the eastern half of the United States. Now let me, let me make a little analogy here. There is a sense in which Christian education is somewhat like that bridge. You know, all of these main artery roads, 75, 71, 74, a little further north, Interstate 70, down south, Interstate 64, and northbound 71 and 75, all of those converge as well as many state routes, and they pour across that bridge. So when that bridge is broke, when that bridge is damaged, everybody feels the consequences. There's a sense in which education is like that bridge. Our children come into our families and we teach them what to do, and what not to do, what to say, what to eat, what not to eat, and all of the kind of things that go into raising children. Or we let them grow up like wild children and apologize all the time and threaten mightily, you know, as some people do. I wasn't raised that way, by the way. And by the way, they're a whole lot happier, you're a whole lot happier, and the people you visit are a whole lot happier if your kids learn to behave themselves at home and then practice it when they go to see brother and sister so-and-so or when they come to church. That doesn't cost you anything. That's absolutely free. <laughs> we train our children. And so they get the stamp of us. They go to school. And all of a sudden, these little shavers are bumping into other people's us's. Their family doesn't do what our family did. They don't eat the same way, they don't go to the same places, they don't entertain themselves the same way. And so all of a sudden these kids are coming home saying, mommy, you know Joey and his mommy and daddy do. Well, that's them, that's, that's not us. And so we start across this bridge. By the time you get to junior high, it can become a really, really, really crucial thing. Those years where every, every fiber of our being wants to fit in and be a part. And we wonder, why do I have these bumps on my face? Why am I not as pretty as she is or as tall? Why am I so skinny? You know, I remember one time helping them to put up hay and these boys took their shirts off and they were kind of robust, you know. Well, we didn't take our shirts off, but I was sure glad we didn't because I was skinny as you, I mean, you could count every rib. Now, it wouldn't be that way now. <laughs> these kids are wanting so much and all of a sudden, they find, you find them doing things that you say, I can't believe. But that enormous vice of conformity is putting the squeeze on them. Get into high school, they start making eyes at a girl or a guy, and you say, wait, 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 son. Uh-uh, you don't want to go there. No, I don't care how handsome he is. That's... And you know what's happened over and over and over again? Somewhere on that bridge, we lost our kids. They went their own way. Everything about what we believe and what we do was associated with pain in their lives. People made fun of their differences. They couldn't go to the dances and this and that that others did. And so always, Serving God was associated with negativity and pain. And you know, I watched in my growing up years, I watched family after family lose all of their kids. And stand back and say, I wish you'd help us pray for our kids. We didn't raise them to do that. We didn't raise them to go that way. And I understand that they didn't intentionally but they crossed the bridge. My parents saw the importance of that. And when I was in kindergarten, they put me in Cincinnati Christian Day School. My dad was teaching at GBS. And every year of my life since then, when I've taken education, it's been Christian education. My mother would take first four, then five of us and get on a city transit bus and travel from East End, which was on the 
on the eastern side of Cincinnati, the southeastern side, down by the river, clear across to North College Hill, which was on the northwestern side. She would take her entire morning going and coming back to get her kids, three little boys, Dan, David, and Daryl, in a Christian school. But I want to tell you something. That investment paid off. All of us are serving God today. All of us are raising families. and We now have grandchildren that are serving God taking their places, loving Jesus, believing in the conservative holiness way. We found a good bridge, a good bridge. You get in college and kids bump into the smartest people they've ever met in their lives. But let me tell you, smart and right are not the same. Smart and right are not necessarily the same. So the smartest people you know may be the most dangerous people you know if you are an impressionable young person. I meet parents all the time that seem to think a Bible college education is somehow second rate and they want to send their kids to this college or that university because they want them to be something. Well, first of all, you don't know what you're talking about. I'd put our graduates up against anybody from anywhere. Secondly, let me ask you, what's more important, that career path or an immortal soul? What's more important? Well, how are they going to do this? You know what? If God wants them to do that, there's a path to get from where you are to there. But you need to make sure you are where God wants you in God's time and in God's place. And if you are, he will keep you from the evil of the world. But there are a lot of people who are driven with stars in their eyes and dollar signs in their eyes and they're trading treasures for junk. We've been seeing in the last few weeks and months the awful scourge of broken bridges. Young people saying socialism is the way to go. Since when? Since when do we want to be like Cuba? Since when do we want to be like Nicaragua? Since when? Since when? Where did that come from? On the broken bridge? There are people today that don't know whether they're a man or a woman. They were born biologically, physiologically one thing, but it's what they're, they're told that's what they identify with. We're told that we're basically a racist and an unjust society. Where did all this garbage come from? The bridge. The bridge. Kids are going away listening to some of the smartest people they've ever heard in their life. And they live in ivory towers and spin theories that don't have any place for God, that don't have any place for absolutes. And they send kids out that look at you like an old fuddy dud who doesn't know any better. And we wonder, how did we get here? Oh, it's the bridge. All of that traffic of human immortal souls going across that bridge. Well, at Hope Sound, we believe that everything that is taught ought to be taught through the lens of a Christian worldview. Now, we're not the only ones that believe that. Penview Bible College believes that, and God's Bible School, and UBC, and Allegheny and all of the rest. We believe that. And we're seeing the world. What's wrong with us? It's not wealth, skewered wealth distribution. It's sin. You fix the problem of sin and you do incredible things to every facet of society. Christian education gives us a chance to keep our kids see, it's like a three-legged stool. If you have 
a home that is strong and spiritual and earnest and a church that is good and strong and a school that complements those two, then you have a three-legged stool that will stand. You take away one of those legs, you got a problem. You have a church that's cold and dead and lifeless, which I know this one is not. But I'll tell you, there are a lot that are. Or you got homes where we talk here and live here. We do what we do because we don't want others to know. Bottom line is simply this. We'll work with you. We'll lock arms with you. We'll stand shoulder to shoulder and heart to heart and say, we don't have anything any more valuable than our young people. Nothing. They're of eternal significance. That's what I tell parents when they come and bring their kids to Hope Sound. I say, you're bringing us the most valuable thing in, the, in your world. And tonight, young people, I want you to know, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as a whole bunch of us in Christian education are concerned, you are worth the investment. You are worth the investment. That's why bright, sharp people take jobs that pay far less than what they can make elsewhere. That's why they work second jobs to be able to do that. That's why they give up and make sacrifices because they feel called of God. Somebody's going to touch those kids as they cross that bridge. Somebody's going to lead fingerprints. May they be godly people who do that. You need to remember that Christian education is still important. It's still important. It's worthy of your financial support. It's worthy of your moral support. It's worthy of your kids. You let them go and learn and get their feet down and bump, uh, rub shoulders with some of the brightest people they'll ever meet in godly context. And then you got a chance of having them be out there in the world and do something for God at the same time. If you don't do that, your chances of losing them are really, really good. And if you lose them, what do you have left? Don't tell me about your bank account. Don't tell me about, I've had parents say, oh, our daughter is a, a lead attorney in a firm in California. Is she a Christian? Well, no, she's not doing what we'd like to see her do. I will pray, but it's probably too late. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Dan Stetler, it's not. Just keep on praying. But in the meantime, let's do what we can to preserve the treasures of our life. <laughs> Thank you for letting me talk to you. I've spent my whole life investing in this. And as long as I can talk about it, I will. Somebody needs to. Thank you.
thankful tonight that I am a child of the King, and uh, I can remember back to a time in my life when I couldn't say that, when I wasn't a child of the King, and uh, I grew up in a good Christian home, and uh, that actually sometimes had its downsides because I tended to see the Christian life as a set of rules, as a prison, and uh, it kept me from being saved at times, but uh, I'm thankful that I can stand before you tonight and tell you that living the Christian life is not a prison. It's not a set of rules. It sets you free. And as this next song says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I'm thankful for that tonight. we've had this year, uh, it's had a lot of ups and downs. Uh, we can definitely all agree on that, but I want to specifically thank God for the downs because those are the parts that we grow from. Uh, if it was all easy, we'd, we'd just be like babies our entire life. I'm thankful, <laughs> I'm thankful that God sends us problems so that we can grow from them.
thankful for the opportunity to uh, be on this choir tour. Um, I'm a freshman, and I'm just so, so thankful for how God has met with us uh, in different ways during each of the services. And this next song, it says, How Can I Keep From Singing His Praises? Um, I just want to praise Him tonight. everything he's done for me I honestly can't um, stop praising God sometimes it feels like he's just so amazing done so much for me I know sometimes we're on the platform we can tend to show our best and to act like nothing is wrong but it's when we go to him privately that we we go to him just broken and, and torn down when nobody sees that nobody nobody knows those struggles that you have but yet God takes us just as we are just just coming to him just broken and and torn down sometimes how we feel when we go to him and he just takes us and he works in our lives and he builds us up and I just I just want to praise him for that and I want to glorify him and I want to thank him for for picking me up and, and uh, allow, allowing me to walk with him and I just want to go in and serve him
songs reminded us earlier, as well as the Bible, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And I'm thankful that we don't have to clean up our lives to come to him. We don't have to try to fix all the brokenness on our own, but that we can come to him just as we are. And he opens up his arms and accepts us freely. Um, <clears throat> I'm thankful that uh, this next song says, it's like Jesus talking to us or God, and he says, I know you, I love you, and I gave my life to save you. And um, a lot of people, if you really knew me, you probably wouldn't love me that much because I can be a monster sometimes, really. But I'm glad that even though God sees all of my brokenness and the shame and the sin that is, has been in my heart, that he loved me even while I was in that state, but he didn't want to keep me there. And um, I'm just thankful that he has purified me and forgiven me and I can stand before him and say I'm not guilty. Uh, okay.
Well, I know the hour is getting late. We have one more song to sing. And I think if I don't let them sing this song, they're going to revolt because this is the last night of tour. Um, this has quickly become one of our favorites to sing to crowds everywhere we've sung. It starts with the men singing, I know that Jesus is mine. And I praise God tonight for the assurance of salvation. My fate is in the nail-scarred hands of Jesus Christ. And I praise Him tonight for salvation. I praise Him tonight for the knowledge of salvation that my sins are forgiven and washed away. I thank Him and praise Him tonight. I am persuaded that He is able to keep that that I've committed unto Him against that day. Praise His name. We, we pray that you are blessed tonight. We thank you for the opportunity to be here and minister to you this evening. Thank you so much, Hope Sound Bible College, for being here with us tonight. And uh, if you've enjoyed their music, say amen. If you've enjoyed more than their music, their ministry, say amen. 
and uh, we certainly are thrilled to have them with us. Uh, we're asking the ushers to prepare to receive the offering tonight and asking you to give uh, generously. Um, as, as Regina, uh, one of our own girls, was testifying tonight, my, my heart was overwhelmed with praise and gratitude for how God uses our Bible colleges to you know, help our young people uh, get right with God. And I remember receiving that message from Regina, uh, messaging me that the Lord had sanctified her. And uh, that was just a tremendous thing. And it's worth it. Bible college is worth it. Your investment in, in Hope Sound Bible College is worth it. And so we're asking that you would give generously tonight and uh, that God would further his kingdom. These are our future uh, laymen in our churches, board members. They're our future teachers. They're the future of our movement, the future of the church, pastors, missionaries. And so every investment, every dollar that you give will reap great rewards. I believe that with all my heart. And so let's, let's pray and ask God's blessing on this offering tonight. Heavenly Father, it is a privilege to be able to give back to your kingdom. And uh, we're just asking, oh God, that you would use this offering tonight, oh God, uh, in the lives of, of those who are educating our young people, oh God, may the cause of Jesus Christ go forward. Bless each one that gives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's stand together and we're going to ask the college choir if they'd go ahead and exit the platform, make their way to the back uh, so they can have an opportunity to greet you. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We invite you back on Sunday if you do not have a home church of your own, 10 o'clock, uh, inside or outside. You have the option of drive in church outside or come right inside here. Uh, both services happening at the very same time. And uh, we invite you back. Thank you so much for coming tonight. You are dismissed.